Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Dust Cuz Robotics, and this is a $30,000 Fusion Pro Epilogue Laser. In today's video, I want to compare how this $30,000 laser stacks up against the roughly $700 Creality Falcon 22 watt that I showed in a previous video. Now, for this test, I am simply going to be looking at which of these lasers can do a better job with a very simple task, which is to do engraving on cutting boards for my girlfriend's Christmas presents for her family. I had about 12 of these cutting boards that we needed to engrave, and I actually already did 10 of them on the Creality laser. It did a perfectly fine job, but I want to see how much faster it would have been if, let's say, I wanted to sell these on an Etsy store and do 100 of them using this $30,000 machine behind me instead of this the $700 Creality machine. The differences between these machines are many, and I'll get into most of them in a little bit. So the Fusion Pro 48 comes in a bunch of different styles. When I said this was a $30,000 laser, that was kind of a lie. I actually don't know how much this laser costs, but the reason it's called the Fusion Pro is because you can actually get this with a combination of a CO2 and a fiber laser, and the variants that include both of those can go upwards of $70,000. This version is only a CO2 laser, and it is probably in the $30,000 to $40,000 ballpark. This laser has a very large bed, if you look at the rulers inside, you'll see that it has a roughly 48 inch wide by 36 inch deep cut area. It also has an automatic Z height adjustment and it's motorized so you don't have to manually set the focus all the time. You also have a huge downdraft evacuation system so all the fumes get out of here and a full enclosure so it's perfectly safe to look into the machine. On the lid, there's actually cameras here and here that take 360 or 180 degree uh, views and these are stitched together in the epilogue software so you actually get a camera view top down of exactly where you're going to be engraving which can save a lot of time lining up things perfectly to get your engraving exactly into the middle of an object. You don't have to like do the make a box thing over and over and shift it a little bit and make a box and shift it a bit like I had to do for the Creality machine. So, uh, there are a lot of differences between these machines. Obviously, originally I tried to go over some of them on camera, but there's way too many to really go over everything. So here's a handy spreadsheet. The main important ones I want to point out to you are going to be, if you look at the speed and acceleration maximums, uh, I'm not 100% sure about the max acceleration on the Falcon 22 watt, but when I plugged it into Lightburn and downloaded the machine's profile, the default engraved settings were 1000 millimeters per second squared acceleration, and they boast a 25,000 millimeters per minute top speed, which is about 417 millimeters per second. Uh, this is probably a lot faster than you'll realistically get to given the really crappy acceleration and the size of the machine however and i found that the stepper motors complained at me when i tried driving it faster than about half of that advertised speed but to be charitable i'm leaving that full 417 millimeters per second speed in this spreadsheet and you can see that still the epilogue is 10 times faster and it has 49 times the acceleration so it can get up to speed extremely quickly and reach that top speed of 4.2 meters per second with 5 g's of acceleration also of note if you live anywhere in north america that has 120 volt outlets uh, you basically can't use the epilogue fusion pro 48 in your house However, they do have smaller lasers you could plug into a standard 110 120 volt outlet. The Fusion Pro 48 requires up to 10 amps on a single phase 240 volt outlet, but the Creality machine only requires a single 110 or 220 volt single phase outlet with up to 120 watts of power, which is basically nothing. Let's take a closer look at what we're actually making today. So this is one of the test pieces that I did on the Falcon 22 watt, the blank, back side is blank so I could do the testing on here. Basically the idea is that my girlfriend's grandfather wrote a recipe in handwriting and I pulled that recipe into Photoshop to rescale it and stretch it a bit so it filled this cutting board a bit better and then into Inkscape to kind of remove the background and get just a black and white image and then we played around with the settings on the Falcon 22 watt for maybe 20 minutes to really dial it in to get exactly the darkness that we wanted so for instance like started off with the recommended engraving settings that was 
just like a speed of 6,000 and a power of 50%, and then we tried 40%, and then we tried 60%, or 70% and 60%, and we decided to settle on 60%. Uh, so all of this is done at a speed of 6,000 millimeters a minute and a 60% power on the Creality. Now, when I was dealing with this on the Creality machine, uh, obviously you're really limited in that top speed, but you're even more limited by the acceleration. I don't know what the exact spec is for the maximum accelerations that you can get, but I'm pretty sure it's in the individual thousands of millimeters per second squared, as opposed to, you know, 49,000. So this took 15 minutes and 13 seconds to do a single full board. This one obviously has some extra crap on it, but basically the whole design that we wanted to do takes 15 minutes, 13 seconds to do one board with an engraving method, and this is important, where it was just following the outlines and contours of each letter individually. When I set it to do the scanning back and forth thing, uh, even rotating it this way, it would have taken so closer to 17 minutes just because it's going over so much white space and wasting so much time doing that and because the time it takes to accelerate and decelerate the ends of travel is so so long for the Creality machine but I'm expecting with this machine if I turn the board sideways like this and it's just scanning back and forth like this it's gonna go so fast it's probably going to take a fraction of the time so let's see how long that will take all right so here's for all the marbles we're gonna see how long it takes to do this and I'm going to run it at 100% speed, 40% power. And the estimate is 4 minutes and 30 seconds. So basically less than a third of the time that reality would do the same thing. So let's see how long it really takes. So yeah, while that's running, uh, let me talk a bit more about my experience with the epilogue laser versus the Creality laser in this instance. Um, Honestly, I had a lot of problems trying to get this project to turn out well on the epilogue. I'm as shocked as you probably are, but the way that CO2 lasers and diode lasers interact with wood especially is very different, and woods in particular can be very challenging because the way that different woods behave is also quite different even on the same machine with the same settings. Sometimes you darken material, sometimes you just ablate it away and end up with like a pocket that's the shape of the thing you were trying to engrave rather than a nice dark marking image or whatever you're going for. In this case, that seemed to be the problem I was running into on the engraving settings with the epilogue. Uh, no matter what I tried here at lower power or higher power, I would either be burning all the way through the wood or I would be just ablating away a thin layer of it and I was never really able to get the nice crisp dark text that I was able to replicate on the Creality machine. Now I think there's a couple different potential reasons for that. Number one, uh, you cannot cut anywhere nearly as thick of a material on the Creality 22 watt laser as you can on this 120 watt laser. And uh, the reason for that is twofold. Number one is obviously the laser power. And number two is the laser's focus. The focal point on the Creality machine is a lot wider and has a much less intense of a spot than you get from the focus of the CO2 laser. And that means that you can't cut through anywhere close to as thick a material. Even the 15 millimeters that Creality advertises, I wasn't able to replicate in wood. They claim you can do 15 millimeters thick of basswood. I couldn't even really get through more than about nine millimeters thick of like an MDF material. I don't have basswood on hand to chest, test with, but I found that really you just end up with this cone shape defocusing of the laser that makes it really difficult to get through material thicker than that. Um, with the CO2 laser, you can probably cut through like four inch thick foam if you really wanted to, and the focus isn't nearly as big of a problem, and you can get larger focal distance uh, lenses for this laser. I think the stock one is like a four inch focal distance. So you can imagine how narrow that cone is relative to with the Creality laser where it's focusing like this far away from the material. Um, and so I think because the energy is spread over a larger area, it was more effectively able to just darken the material rather than kind of blasting it away on the diode laser from the Creality. And then on course, there's probably just the fact that it's a diode instead of a CO2 and that interacts with the material differently because they're different wavelengths. I talked about that more in my past video. Like the diode laser, it's using blue light, like literally visible light. So that 
is actually going to pass through clear acrylic. But this CO2 laser is using a infrared light at a completely different wavelength, so it actually can cut straight through a clear acrylic that's, you know, invisible to visible light, but it's opaque to infrared. So that is possibly another reason that I was able to make the nice dark crisp text with the Creality diode laser, but I couldn't quite manage to do that with the epilogue, at least with these settings. I was able to go back later and I'll show that in a bit, where I, instead of trying to do this engraving pass back and forth, if I just try to draw the outlines of the letters, uh, I was able to make a dark mark that way, but it didn't really produce the result I wanted. Maybe if I was more familiar with Epilogue software, I could get the result that I really wanted from this setup, but within the time that I had, I wasn't quite able to manage it. So yeah. All the text is on there, but like, <laughs> it's completely illegible. Unless you're looking at it at just the right light. So, as far as speed goes, Fusion Pro absolutely wins. But as far as the result goes, I think the winner is going to be our 700-ish dollar Falcon 22. Now, I do have one idea of something else we can try here. So rather than trying to engrave, I could just draw the outlines of the text and see if that works. Looks like for whatever reason, drawing the outlines of the text does actually make a nice dark mark. So maybe if you play around with settings and you know how to use the laser better than I do, you could get this kind of result uh, with the engraving as well. Uh, but this, doing this for the whole thing would take 16 minutes, so it's actually slower than the Falcon laser, and it doesn't fill in the letters. So I still think that the, the Falcon's going to win this one. There's one more thing I want to try for the meme, though. All right, let's do one last thing. I want to actually cut through the damn thing. That was 10% power, or sorry, 80% power, 10% speed, four passes. And now we're talking. <laughs> so yeah, that's what the Fusion Pro can do that I think the Creality cannot. <laughs> So what did we learn? Well, sometimes money isn't everything. In this case, the Epilogue laser costs 68 times as much as this Creality machine, and still, it was not really able to perform that much better. I mean, if I had gotten the settings perfect somehow and gotten it to give the result that I wanted, it still was taking, at best, a quarter of the time to do these engravings as what the Creality machine would have. Um, that said, you can cut through materials with the epilogue that you simply cannot cut through 
with Creality, Diode Laser, or any other Diode Laser for that matter. And you can do it with a level of speed and precision that is almost unmatched. More importantly, the camera system and ability to align your design directly onto your uh, product and engrave directly onto a product that way without having to mess around with exactly where it's going to end up could save you a huge amount of time. And if you're running a business where time is money, then that in and of itself might be very valuable to you. I think that a lot of the times with these industrial machines, the plug and play nature and ease of use are really what you're paying for more than just the capabilities of the machine. I'm sure that there's a bunch of people who are going to shout in the comments, you should just buy like a $200 uh, K40 steel 2 laser or something like, yeah, sure. If what you want is a project instead of an actual device, then sure, you should buy and upgrade a machine that comes incomplete. But for the same reason that I bought a Bamboo Lab 3D printer instead of an Ender 3, um, I feel like there's always going to be a place for these industrial systems that make it super easy to get the exact thing that you want. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Happy holidays, everybody. And as always, thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, I probably won't be making too many more like this. But if you like combat robots, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon. And you can support me on Patreon if that's your thing.